little bit. I'll let you guys take it over. Okay. Hi, everyone. So, uh, as he said, I'm Kelly. I'm with the Alexandria Police Department. I was hired about two years ago at the police department, <coughs> basically to handle anything social service related. So when an officer goes out for a case where it's a mental health issue, um, I follow up with that family. Or a domestic violence victim, I assist that victim with getting into services. Or if it's a family that's just in need of services, whether it's housing, medical insurance, I kind of do all that. And kind of what in our department statistics show was over 70%, or around 70% of police responses were all social service related. It was not crime related. And so, Chief came up with an idea to hire a social worker at the police department. So I was the first in Kentucky to have this title, and then next following me was Becky from Erlanger Police Department. And then I got so busy with all the cases that the, our police department hired a second police social worker, Bruna. And so that's kind of what we do is we handle anything social service related, um, and some things that I do out in our areas, I assist the Campbell County school systems with various topics, and one of them is social media, um, the risks and consequences that are associated with social media. Um, I also do poverty simulations and those type of things that assist the schools with educating the community on different things that are out there. And so I was asked to come by Sherry. I met her at the Campbell County Drug Free Alliance meeting. Um, a couple years ago, I guess a year and a half ago, um, and she invited me to come present this. I presented it a couple school systems so far, and um, it's just more of a brief overview. It's nothing really in depth because technology and apps and game systems are changing so frequently that it's really hard to keep up with everything. Um, so we're going to kind of team this all together and just kind of walk you through some of the things that we're seeing on the internet. Um, and then, like they said, Kim from the court designated worker, she handles all the criminal stuff that comes with bad things that happen on social media. So if the city, if our department finds that it's crime related, we turn it over to um, the court designated worker or the county attorney or the Commonwealth attorney, depending on what kind of charge it is, and then they assist with those type of charges. So she's gonna talk more of the legal aspect of the consequences of social media. So, just to kind of go through, we're doing a presentation. Um, there's good and bad of social media, so I want to touch on both. Um, some good things about social media is you stay connected with friends. Um, you meet and interact with others who are similar interests. So, does that help? Yeah. Okay. Um, it enhances your child's knowledge with various topics. You can now search anything on the internet and find the answers to it. And it encourages freedom of self-expression. Um, my daughter, who me and my husband messed up schedules tonight, so fortunately, unfortunately, she had to come with me. But my daughter, who's 10, has an app called Musical.ly. And what that is, is basically it's kids um, doing videos of, she's 10, so like frozen videos and those kind of things. And you get to do all these lights and action and all these different things that it just kind of expresses your self-expression of it. Um, now there's also bad social media. Uh, actually, let me go back. One thing that I want to stress with the children in this audience what you put out there is forever. It never, ever, ever goes away. So if you post something mean or nasty about somebody, we're gonna get access to it. If you post a picture of something inappropriate, we're gonna get access to it. So internet is forever. Even your Snapchats that you guys think delete in 10 seconds or whatever the amount of time is, it doesn't. We get it. And I can tell you, just at the end of the school year at Campbell County Middle School, we took 15 iPhones. And those parents never got those $1,000 iPhones back because they had inappropriate things on them. And there's criminal charges that others face. So it is forever. We can get that information off there. Um, 
Also with that, you have cyberbullying. Um, over 50% of adolescents have been victims of cyberbullying, and basically that's because it's easy. It's easy to sit behind a keyboard and bully somebody and say very mean things about somebody because um, you're not face to face with them. So that is a big risk. Um, one study showed that nine out of 10 kids will post photos of themselves online using their real names on their profile. So they're posting pictures using their name. That can be easily tracked, easily located. Eight out of 10 have revealed their birth dates and interests. So the bad guys that are out there are now seeing names associated with pictures. They're seeing birth dates. They're seeing that Sally is on the cheerleading team at Dayton High School. So they're seeing all that information. <coughs> You also have seven out of 10 that are posting their school name and the town that they're living in. So now the bad guy who's on the other end is seeing all this information and being able to locate your child. So social media can be very, very scary and very risky. There's also an addiction to social media. I don't know how many of you guys, but there's times that I have to tell my 10 year old, put down the phone, go out and play kickball, go out and do something. It's an addiction for kids. They have and Snapchats and Instagram, all these likes and what's the new terminology that's out there? Um, streaks. What streak? What was it? Streaks. Streaks. That's it. Yeah. So they like how many streaks you can get is a big thing for children nowadays, and it's just more of how many people are looking at your stuff. Uh, location. Users that you're friends with or users that are on a system can see where you're at at all times. So if I'm Snapchatting with Bruna and I want to see where Bruna's at, if she hasn't set her privacy setting and location, I can find out the exact address that Bruna's at. So if I'm a bad guy and you're Snapchatting with somebody that you don't know and you think you know them, I'm going to locate you. I'm going to come and, and see what's going on. Uh, sharing, so location sharing with friends is via map is optional, but if you don't know it, to turn it off on your settings, it's automatically there. So again, they're locating where you're at. Uh, what I didn't add here was when we do get those 15 iPhones that have inappropriate pictures or pictures that text that shouldn't be on devices, we are alerted at the police department. We spark an investigation, we come and take your phone. If you cooperate with the investigation, we take your phone and as long as you have not sent that picture on or forwarded that picture, then we keep the phone and destroy it. If you take a picture or if you receive a picture and send it to the next person, that's distributing child pornography. That is a felony charge that will be on your record forever. You, once you get to be an adult and you want to go to your child's school play, you can't go because you have a felony sex offender charge. Okay, so those are different things that are very, now that is extreme, but what I want to stress is if you get a picture or if you get something that's inappropriate, whether it's your friend, whether it's somebody you do not know, Tell a parent, tell a teacher, tell somebody, get it to who needs to get it, don't do anything with it, and let us handle that. And then, Kim, do you want to speak a little bit more of how the charges come to you? Okay, so what happens is when you get it, if you receive a charge from a police officer, the charge comes directly to me or the two girls in my office, and then we process it. If it is a felony charge, we're going to bring you in, we're going to have a conversation, about a half hour conversation, then we're going to take it up to our county attorney. Our county attorney is the one that decides exactly what you're going to be charged with. You can be charged with a felony. Any picture of any private spot on a child 18 or younger is considered child pornography. If you have child pornography on your phone, your phone, like she said, will be confiscated and you will not get it back. Cooperating with the police or anything else, our county attorney does not give a factor. If you, that's a place D felony. 
It, you know the difference between a felony and a misdemeanor? A misdemeanor is a traffic ticket. It's um, a charge that you might have to go to court for. Most of the time, misdemeanors are handled in our office, and you don't see the day of life in court. A felony goes to court. You're going to be standing before a judge. You're going to have an attorney, and you're going to have a public um, prosecutor sitting across from you telling you that this is the rest of your life because of a choice you've made. There is a consequence for every choice, so just make sure the choice you make, you're ready to accept the consequence. But if you receive a felony, you're going to be in front of a judge, and then it goes from there. And it's a year out of your life sometimes, going back and forth to court to make sure that you can either get this charge gone, or they may send you back to us. But you keep that charge until you're 18. At 18, you can be moved up to a youthful offender, and that's when she was talking about that goes on with you for the rest of your life. You, be, you have to register where you live, where you're at, everything. So if you're in a fight with your girlfriend or you're in a fight with your boyfriend, think before you post something that you think is going to be really funny. Because I, those 15 kids that she said they got at the end of the school year, I got all 15 of them. Seven of them went to court and seven of them are still in court. So think before you act, guys, because it's not, a, it's not fun. You're playing with the rest of your life, and it does not go away. You, like she said, you think it's gone, it's not gone. We have <coughs> tech people that can dig so deep into your technology on your phone, on your computers, on anything, and find anything. You'd be amazed. So don't do it. Thank you. Uh, and to add to that, out of those 15, we did have um, a couple parents irate with us because we had just taken oh. their child's iPhone that was at least $1,000, and they made a phone call to us and demanded that we give the phone back, and our, our officer's response to them was, okay, you come, come on to the police department. We're not going to give you their phone back, but because you pay for that phone, you're under arrest too because you're responsible for whatever's on that phone. So for parents, watch your kids. Know what they're using. Uh, to go into that, I only talked here about a few apps. Again, these apps are changing so frequently, we, you can't keep up with them. What I stress is if your child wants an app, be it password protected, my child has to come to me if she wants, um, I don't know, a game app. And I put in my password to approve that app, and I research that app. I look on the internet. Again, you can find everything out there. What is this app? What, do, what, what can you do on this app? And every, every search that I've looked at, you see what you can do and the, the risk associated with that app. Uh, so a big one that we see out in Cable County is Snapchat. You take a picture, you send something to a friend, and allegedly it goes away in whatever, 10 seconds. Um, my, I know some kids use it for like putting memes and all that stuff on them, um, and some use it for inappropriate material. So uh, that is Snapchat. Twitter is more just a communication, kind of like Facebook, but not as in-depth. And I know Facebook is not thing for kids anymore that's for adults. You have Instagram, uh, this calculator app. So everybody has this app on their phone. However, the Bayad app has different numbers in a different order, or a different plus minus, and it's a vault. And you click on, you click on the calculator app, and just as a calculator would show, you type in a password, and if you have the password correct, opens this vault of pictures. It's nothing that's on your camera roll. It's nothing that anybody can see but stored in this vault. And that's something that we discovered about a year ago during an investigation of some kids' phones at the high school was they were keeping pictures of nudes in their calculator app vault. So there's things out there. Kids are sneaky. Again, you just you got to gotta watch. Um, and then there's Musical.ly, and I, that was on here because I did a presentation at St. Thomas and their younger kids. I don't know if you guys use Musical.ly, but that's where you make music videos. 
Uh, and then I have a handout here of other apps that I have researched and found. You're more than welcome. I have copies and I'll leave them at the desk that you can take. And I put a brief description on what the app is. Uh, like I said there, if you're using these apps responsible, they're fun. They're good. I have Facebook. I don't have Snapchat or any of that just because I, I don't like it. But there's apps out and, and people use Snapchat and are, are safe with Snapchat. But you've got to know what your kid's using. Uh, so on to what can you do as a parent, uh, put restrictions on their phone. Uh, out of the survey that we took, over 50% of parents have no restrictions on their kid's phone. That's just silly, guys. Have restrictions on your kid's phone. Um, it's easy access. Kids can get to anything nowadays on the internet, I know my daughter for the longest time liked Luke Bryan, and she typed in Luke Bryan, Shake It For Me, whatever that song was, and somehow it filled her to girls on girls dancing wild and shaking, and so it can be honestly just an accident of stumbling across a site, but I learned quickly to have restrictions that those sites can't filter into your system. Um, have your privacy settings on the strictest level. Everybody has different phones, so I'm not going to go into which phones to hold which restrictions, but just search for it and you'll see how to put it on the highest restriction possible. Have ground rules for your kids. Uh, always know their passwords to every site. Uh, right now I can get into my phone and I know if my child has passwords for different things, I have them listed. Her Musical.ly password, here's her username, here's her password, at any point in time I can go into her phone and type it in. They don't want to give you the password, they're not allowed to have that app. That's the rule. It's your phone, you're paying for it, they're under 18, even if they are paying for it, they're in your household. They have their passwords for everything. Uh, use your phone, your MacBook, in a central location. Can't view it out sitting on the dining room table, then they probably shouldn't be viewing it at all. Don't let them take it to their rooms and just search at their leisure. Have it in a central location at any point. You can walk by that device and see what's on it. Know who their online friends are. You know who they're going home to. You know who their friends they're staying all night with. You know who they're friends with online. Don't let them be friends with anybody that they don't know. Make sure you know who their friends are on Snapchat, whatever it is. Limit their use. Um, I know this is hard to do, and especially at the high school level, they're always on that phone, but just limit their loop use to it. Um, again, I think I already touched on this. Make sure they're asking you for permission before they download an app. Do the research, find out what that app is before allowing it. Monitor everything that they're doing. Um, because I don't have Snapchat on my personal phone and my, my child does, I have Snapchat on my phone, but it's her account. So if somebody's sending her something, I'm seeing what that is. Um, she doesn't have Facebook or anything like that, but I would do the same thing, that if she had an app, I would have that app on my phone so I'm able to track who's talking to her. Sure. Uh, we handled a case out in Alexandria. It was an eight-year-old. Um, for some reason, this eight-year-old had Musical.ly, Periscope, Twitter, Instagram. What was the fifth one? I don't remember what the fifth one was, but she was on Musical.ly doing a video. She uploaded it to Periscope. Some creep ball got a hold of it, was looking at this video. It was an innocent video at first. Um, this guy, we assumed was a guy. Started talking to her, asking her to do different things. She's eight, she's naive. She starts doing these different things, showing her privates, dancing. Crazy, I don't even know how she learned some of these dance moves. But she did, um, and that was out there on the internet for everybody to see, anybody who wanted to see this. So again, know what your kids have. And kids, it's so important to be safe. Know who you're talking to. Uh, get to know technology. Like I said, research the apps, look at the reviews that they're using. 
Uh, talk to your kids. Don't keep it a secret. It's out there. Don't keep any of this a secret. Talk to your kids about safety. Let them know the risks that are associated. Don't hide anything. Don't sugarcoat anything because chances are they can probably teach you more than you know. Okay, so they already know it. Talk about it. Let them know. Be also, as parents, be a good example for your child. If you're at the dinner table, you don't get on your iPhone. If you're driving, don't text and drive. Those are different things that set a good example for your child so your child can follow your examples. Uh, kids, if you do not know who is on the other line of that phone or who is messaging you, delete it. Don't answer them. Don't talk back to them because that's just a bait to get you. Don't, like I said, don't give your name. Don't give your address. Don't give any identifying information that anybody can track you down. We also had a case out in Alexandria that she got to chatting with somebody that she thought was a school friend and ended up not being a school friend and this person ended up knowing where she lived. Um, and that nothing ended up happening, but it was a very scary situation for that little girl. So know who you're talking to. There's different tracking devices out there that parents can use, and I also have a list of that for you guys that I'll hand out. Uh, there's different kinds of software. There's free software. There's software that you can buy. Um, so you can always look into tracking devices. Uh, some of them that I've heard of that I don't use is NetManny, PureSight, um, and you can block different things and filter different options. Uh, you can also even monitor your so child's cell phone on a software program with my, my mobile watchdog. Um, like I said, download the apps on your phone so you know what they're using and what's out there. Um, Life 360, I, I actually use this because um, if my kid's phone ever comes up missing. But it tracks your phone, it tracks locations, it tracks when your child leaves a location. So on mine, I put my house, I put my child's school. So I let her take her phone to school. She has to turn it off before she walks into the door. She can turn it back on at 3.15. But I can see, I'll get an alert, child arrived at school, child left school, child arrived at home, which she doesn't walk at home, but I have that. Teenagers, you can track, parents, you can track how fast your teenager's driving. You can get an alert, it'll give you an alert. Um, it was a 40, 40 mile speed zone. Your child just went 50 in that speed zone. You can track every location that your child went to. So if your child says, yeah, they're going to um, Bellevue High School to meet one of their friends. You can track that they went from your location straight to the high school and made no stops. So that is a big one that I encourage you to use. A lot of the features on there is free um, to get alerts of the speeding. I think it's an upgrade that you have to pay some type of little fee, but it's an awesome app. Um, find a phone. Every I think iPhones have it, so if you lose a phone, you can find it. Or if your child's not coming home when they're supposed to, you can click on it and find out where they're at. And there's an app called Following. Again, you follow where they're at. Did I miss anything? Does anybody want to add anything? I just want to get one thing that I forgot. There is a video on MTV. It's called um, Sexting in America When Privates Go Public. It is excellent. And it tells the story of a young girl, 15, who sexted thought she was okay because her boyfriend said he couldn't share it. Yeah, the next day he shared it with everybody. He got charged, a more severe charge than her sending it because he distributed it. That is actually a higher felony charge than sending it. Watch this video. It also tells about a guy who went on and ended up being on the sex offenders registration because of something that he did. So this is nothing to play around with, you guys. If you you know, watch this video, it really does, it kind of opens your eyes a little bit. And watch it with your parents. Parents, watch it. And I'm going to leave a stack back here also that has the name of it and some of the definitions and stuff that we were talking about. I know, uh, just in Cincinnati, what year was that 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 little girl? Uh, 
it was a few years ago. Within the last five years, uh, a girl was in high school and it was her senior sweetheart. Uh, she sent a picture of her breast to her boyfriend. Um, they both went away to college, they ended up breaking up. The boyfriend ended up sending that picture of her breast out to his friends and it showed, um, it was a pretty good graph of once you send it to one person, they send it to four, that four sends it to another 12, that 12 sends it, and all of a sudden, within like three or four different colleges, all these people had a picture of her breast. Uh, and she ended up committing suicide because of how embarrassing it was for her. Um, and that, that was just a form of cyberbullying that, you know, somebody got a picture of her breast and ended up sending it out. Uh, there was also a case where, it was in Florida, this girl, similar situation, when she went to college, um, and she graduated from college, she got, was going for her full-time job, and I know with my job, they looked at everything possible in my history. They looked at my Facebook, they looked at my traffic tickets, they interviewed my husband, they talked with friends just for me to get a job. But that was something similar to her, and unfortunately, she had this picture of a nude on one of her social media sites, or a picture that was inappropriate, I don't think it was, a, I think it might have been her breast. And uh, it almost prevented her from getting that her dream job. That this was a job that she had gone to college for, spent six years in college, went for this job, and that almost prevented her from getting that job. She did some explaining, said what happened, and luckily it all worked out for her. But that was something and a risk that she potentially could have had that she may not have had that job because of decisions she made back in high school to post a picture at a party of her breast. So. Um, it's out there, it's scary, there's bad, bad people on the end of all these social media sites, all these internet sites. Uh, I was talking to someone today who, on Snapchat, they have Snapchat and they're not even friends with this person and all of a sudden they were getting like nude pictures and it was from a different language, uh, it wasn't even our language and it was a nude picture that this person obviously was not friends with, but they're receiving nude pictures. So it's, it's very important as a child that you keep yourself safe. It's very important as a parent that you're keeping your child safe. Know what they're doing and you guys be smart. If it doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. Always trust your gut decision. If you're getting something and it just it doesn't feel good, talk to your parents about it. If you're not comfortable, talk to your school counselor talk to anybody, report it to the police. Like I said, if the individuals, we said seven out of 15 were in court, I think five of them cooperated with our investigations. They ended up not sending on the photo that they received, they just deleted it. Well, they thought they deleted it, we saw it on their phone later, but uh, luckily they didn't distribute it on, so we wiped their phone and they were given their phones back. The other seven don't have their phones back. They're still in court, like she said. So if you're cooperating with your law enforcement and you're cooperating with your county attorneys, there's a chance your case will go okay. So does anybody have any questions, comments? Yes? I do. If they get, if someone wants to send them a new, they can get in trouble for that if it's facing sent it to them? Yes, they can. They can, um, however, what they do with it, they may not. So if, if you get it and you report it, Chances are you're not going to get in trouble. Our county attorney won't push charges on that. It's if they send it on, then it's exchanging, distributing, depending on what. Huh? If they got it, they deleted it. They get still in trouble for that. They may not get in trouble for deleting it. Like on ours, a couple of them deleted it, and the county attorney wouldn't take that case. But we did wipe their phone out completely, um, just because we didn't know what else could be on that. Um, but there was a couple that received it um, and showed Sammy or showed their friend next to them and that they did get in trouble for that. They showed it, then deleted it, and those individuals did get a lesser charge but did get in trouble. We have a kid right now who um, just turned 18. He has a 16-year-old girlfriend. They videotaped a sexual act between the two. Um, a couple months 
Later, she got in trouble. Her parents went through the phone, found the video, sent it, took it to the police. Um, once they got his phone, because he had just turned 18, but still a senior in high school, um, it saw that he sent it to one of his friends, one friend. He now, um, his, he just got sentenced. Um, he is a lifetime sex offender registrant. Lifetime. Um, they asked for jail time, for prison time, to not get on that registry because that, your life would be ruined. And they would not do it. So, it's that easy. And with that question, um, what sparked the 15 phones being taken? Um, it was actually, it dealt with um, the school alleged shooting out, in, or the, the kid had a gun, was gonna shoot up Pendleton County Schools or Falmouth, whatever it was. And our officer went in to talk to that kid. And that kid, we are like, do you know why we're here? And he's like, well, yeah, because I got that picture of so-and-so. And of course, he's like, no, not that, but we'll go back to that. <laughs> Let's talk about the gun situation. And then we went back to the picture, and that's how the investigating started. He received a picture. Uh, he forwarded on to several different people, and that's what sparked the investigation. But some of them didn't send it on, and like I said, they got their phone back, and things were okay for them. But. Kelly, can I touch on one thing? Yeah. I know we're talking a lot about the sexting and everything, but there's another avenue down here, too. If you are on your Snapchat or on Facebook or whatever, and you had a really bad day at school, and you get on there and you say, oh my god, I wish I could just shoot that school up. I'm going to tell you something, you guys. We had a kid in our office. He literally, he said, I could just take a gun and shoot that school up. And he didn't really mean he was going to do it. Homeland Security picked up school and gun out of that. It was Homeland Security in New York. They called the police department down here in where this child lives. That day when he got to school, there were four, three or four officers, FBI, full suit, machine guns waiting in a marked, unmarked car. When that child got out and started walking to school, they took him to the ground and they took his father to the ground and they arrested him immediately right there. You talk about scared. Don't joke. Don't get on there and say, I want to shoot the school up or I wish I could kill this teacher or you would be amazed at how many kids come before us just for saying, I hate this school. That teacher's a bitch. I'm telling you, you guys, it happens. It happens. Just <coughs> think before you push the buttons on those phones and the computers. We've had a couple um, cases where I've had to knock on doors because a child will make a statement on social media, um, I hate my life, I just want to die, or I wish this would all come to an end, and, and those things are taken also very serious because suicide rate is, is high. And so those are also some consequences that you may think as a child, it's just a a silly statement and I'm venting, but you know, it can be, we, we hold those things very serious. So.